Good morning. Happy Friday, everybody. We have YouTube and Instagram joining us live for our every morning 9 a.m. live natural health show where I talk about ways to protect you and your families to keep you safe and healthy through these crazy times. And welcome everybody joining. Let me know where you're tuning in from. As always, it's a pleasure to be a resource for you as you navigate these um, these crazy times, especially for our, um, all of our friends and viewers and uh, members in California. Welcome all of you. I know you guys are, are um, entering an interesting phase for the next month and a half or so. So today we are going to um, have our normal show where I kind of detail some key items and uh, information for you to be aware of. But then also I'm going to share with you some resources that I grabbed and have available here at home that you probably do as well or can easily buy on Amazon, which by the way, Amazon links in my YouTube uh, channel. Those all support our channel. Uh, YouTube is censoring all coronavirus content. We as creators are being demonetized and minimized in terms of our outreach, which directly affects our income. So I'm uh, bringing you all healthy, free, valuable content. And I hope you will um, support me by clicking on those links. And even if you don't buy these items, buy your normal, gro normal groceries, as um, we do have a minor commission that does fuel and finance our efforts here. So welcome everybody. Um, let me know where you guys are tuning in from on YouTube. I didn't do a tester this morning, so let me know if you can hear me. Um, I am uh, excited in terms of the latter part of this um, show. I'm going to share with you DIY face masks and some resources that will be helpful. And then also some positive things. So I'm trying to keep this empowering, uplifted, upbeat, and um, while also sharing with you a ton of valuable information. So let's just dig right on into where we're at. We have, in the US alone, we've had a, a staggering uh, number increase. We've had over, geez, almost 5,000 in increased cases, partially because of the testing. You know, we have a testing crisis. We have a uh, protective, um, personal protective equipment crisis. We just are here in the U.S. are plagued with uh, a lack of response and uh, public and uh, officials not taking this totally serious. So welcome to all of you joining. So let's just dig in. U.S., we're at 14,387 cases. New York is the staggering state. They occupy 30 percent of the existing cases. Um, so they're at 5,711. They've had an ex extreme uh, increase in the deaths. So there's 38 deaths. One has recovered in that state, followed by Washington. Um, good news is Washington, 89 have recovered in that state. Good morning, Lois. Good early morning. Lois is coming to us from Hawaii. So I wish I were there with you. Um, New Jersey and California are hovering in the 900s, uh, California 700s in New Jersey. I uh, yesterday started to um, make a predict prediction that we're gonna start to see spikes in Florida cases and that has happened. We're seeing uh, Florida's now at 432. They've had nine deaths, that's increased quite a bit. Um, and we probably will see more uh, based on some information uh, that I'm going to share with you. A, a really unique company or a company is really using unique technology to kind of track the um, temperatures that are being taken around the world. And that actually is paired up with the growth of the coronavirus. So I'm going to share with you some information about that. I think that's kind of telling in terms of where we're going to see pockets happening. And hopefully Floridians, if you're tuning in, I grew up, you know, I'm a Floridian. Um, I hope you guys start to get a little bit more serious. I have friends that are in businesses. I owned a business down there. I have friends who are a part of the political scene. And it doesn't seem like Florida really is ready yet to take the economic hit. But unfortunately, they are... Um, they're going to have a healthcare hit, which is going to be crazy. So uh, Michigan is in the 300s. Um, we're also seeing uh, Massachusetts is in the 300s. Georgia's at 287. Texas is in the 300s. Louisiana is in the 300s. So let me know if you guys are from those states. Uh, and I'm just curious if people are 
concrete down. Some states are being more responsive than others, like California um, issued an order. The governor went on uh, line. Um, I really love that governor. Uh, he's totally Hollywood, isn't he? <laughs> so he um, said that he's ordering all stay at home people to stay at home and only essential items. Um, so that is going to be a new kind of um, way of living for Californians. And the World Health Organization. So again, I just want to say for any of the negative commenters that we've had, trollers, um, this information that I provide is factually sound. It's sound information. It comes from epidemiology or epidemio epidemiological studies. We have data, so it's numbers. Numbers don't lie and numbers are not meant to spread fear, but they're meant to educate and to help us take action. So one of the things that the World Health Organization um, is, is assessing, they're, they're digging into a few new protocols in terms of early investigative um, research to assess potentially asymptomatic patients. Um, one of the things that we saw a report from Iceland, is it Iceland? Yeah, Iceland. Because I told Brian, I'm like, we should just go to Iceland. I bet nobody has it. Well, apparently a lot of cases um, have uh, tested positive in Iceland and a good majority of those individuals are asymptomatic. And so it was very telling that report in terms of the amount of people that, um, you know, don't always present with symptoms, but are carriers. And that is where we have to be really cognizant why staying at home, limiting exposure, being six feet from our friends and family and our, you know, play daters and, and all of the folks that we encounter, even shopping, shop online, shop from home. Um, so that is one thing I really want to communicate is that the World Health Organization is starting to assess the cases, the early cases, the, the immune response, they're starting to look at households. Uh, we saw that one awful, awful story about the new Jersey family, a Jewish family. They were gathering either for a birthday or some event and like the mother and three of the children have died and like 18 other family members have tested positive and they were in all one zone. It was crazy. Um, so that is really, I think, key. And then also they're um, starting to look at... Um, the, they're going to look more at the surface life and then they're going to look at, I can't even read my own handwriting, but they, they're, they you know, the World Health Organization is where a lot of stuff is, is coming out of. And so again, swivel hips, I'm just not going to tolerate spam. Okay. We're just going to put you in timeout. You can troll on somebody else's live report. Okay. So, um, all right, so the reality is that this is a real situation and it is impacting people. Uh, Lois said, Hawaii, in Hawaii, the governor has asked visitors to cancel or postpone their vacations. They've had 11 cases as of yesterday, but one visitor so far. Okay, good morning, Pat. All right, and we've got some folks from South um, Africa. We have an international community here. Um, and so I always appreciate that because we also have gotten good insights from um, Australia and folks in Italy and Germany. Speaking of Germany, um, they, and I don't know if this has to do with their testing. I'm not so tuned in. I do have several friends that are expats there. So I'm finding out, but um, Germany saw overnight the cases go from 3,000 to 13,000, almost 14,000. It's like 13,957. That's in, that's pretty intense. So uh, almost 1,100 spike in terms of their cases. And I don't know how that's what that's going to mean, but that's a significant amount of people. And we just know the percentages, 16 to 18% of those are going to be critical. They're going to need ICU beds. So that's just something that's, that's happening. Um, so the other thing I want to, let me just move my little power bar here. Um, the other thing I want to know is I, want, I always want to kind of be positive and be cognizant of happiness and joy that people are finding in all this chaos. And one of the things that I um, came across last night um, was that we were, um, that, that, that at least in the U.S., there are some actresses that have get, get, they've come together and they've called... Um, it's called Save the Stories. And so, you know, Hollywood being in LA and being cognizant of all the schools shutting down, you know, two to three million kids are going to be without meals across the US. They decided that they would um, engage in 
charitable efforts, but also have celebrities um, and and people that are recognizable by young kids, um, even athletes, read stories. And so they actually are raising funds as well. So I actually did this last night um, and and sent a text. So if you send a text to two zero two two two. So 20222, and you type in save, S-A-V-E. Um, it then prompts you to type in your zip code, and it will charge your cell phone bill $10. So you can make a donation via your um, cell carrier. I thought that was great. And um, you know, for a lot of us that feel uh, very much in tune with all the children that get meals in their schools, and that's the only healthy meal, and then their parents are in a bind because they might be from single family households, or even, you know, their families might be in shambles and nobody's going to be helping them. This helps support those outreach programs to them. So I just wanted to put that out there. The other thing on the good side is that um, nursing homes are asking for letters. Um, so you can Google and call your local nursing home because they're on clamp down and locked down. They're not getting visitors. And so sending them mail and even visiting from the windows. I, I wouldn't advise that, but I would definitely you know, advise connecting with any of your family and loved one that are in nursing homes or assisted living facilities, scheduling you know, routine video chats and sending them you know, letters and mail. It, it's, it's empowering and it's uplifting. And you know, anytime you get a handwritten note from anybody nowadays is pretty darn spectacular because that way of living has kind of gone out the out, out the door. So um, the other thing to Walmart is apparently going to be hiring 150,000 people. So I know a lot of folks have messaged me that they are going are facing um, unemployment. And so, oh, thanks, Anita. Um, so the so just be aware. And Amazon, I think, too, is ramping up. I linked or posted that the other day. Um, all right, so let's see. That those are kind of my updates. I know that there um, might be some more data coming out later tonight, tomorrow morning, um, and I'm staying on top of that for all of you. Um, you know, the big thing is that if you live in areas or states that are not responsive, or even communities. So, for instance, Brian has to work from. He's on a call from like on a series of calls from 11 to 4 today. So, Gabriel and I are going to get in the car. We're going to drive around. I want to kind of do an assessment of Roswell. Um, but I'm just seeing on Facebook all of the posts, like the Roswell Moms Group. People are out and about. Like yesterday was a gorgeous day, and people were packed in at restaurants, which is so insane. It's so irresponsible. I had a local vendor that I um, have shopped at. I won't shop again. I'm going to vote with my dollar. But they sent out an email um, saying that they were having a VIP shopping event. Like I understand where they're coming from, but at the risk of bringing people into a small little boutique and then having tons of clothing and then trying it on. I mean, that transmission right there, that's just crazy, crazy negligent. And I actually sent her a message just saying, I, I think this, you know, I don't know if this was an auto email or a plan, but you know, I, I think you should postpone. And if not put your efforts towards, selling your items online. Like people, I'll buy online. I'm not coming into your store. And she had like a two or three hour window where it was just public coming in and had some decent discounts. But then, you know, it was like, oh, we'll take an hour to clean as if that's going to be helpful. So pretty darn crazy. Um, Lois was reporting that Hawaii, the beaches are still busy there. It's just really, really insane to me. Um, so friends, first of all, please like, thumbs up the video that helps our algorithm. Share it for all of you on Facebook or uh, uh, share it on YouTube. You can share it to Twitter, Facebook, whatever. But I really do appreciate it. Um, okay, so Lorraine from Miami. I picked up a prescription and the pharmacist wasn't wearing gloves. I was. I'm afraid to take medicine. Am I overly alarmist? So that's a good question. I, if you don't need those medications in any period of time, I'd let them sit for a few days, you know, five to seven, seven to nine days. Um, sometimes you don't have the ability to, but that is definitely something that um, I, I have noticed that the, we've done deliveries. By the way, I have a new YouTube video out from yesterday um, where I detail, we had an Instacart delivery. And I mean, I, I see them all. They're not wearing masks, they're not wearing gloves. And we are starting to hear frontliners. We're seeing 
people at grocery stores. We're seeing our fire department, our police department, our, you know, I think 20, what was it yesterday? It was like a certain percentage of our medical population was at risk. Um, dozens, so dozens of our cases are actually healthcare providers who are sick. And there's a neuro, um, uh, neurosurgeon, I think in New York who has it. And, you know, that individual wouldn't typically come into contact, but he would, if somebody they operated on or were exposed to in the hospital setting, the high coronavirus. So, um, and that's why today I want to talk to you about protective gear. So I've got all sorts of materials here. I even have a little download for you. Um, but one of the things that I really want to highlight is that we individually have to take, we have to take control. We have to take control of our protection. We have to take control of our family's protection. And we also have to take control of our home, our cars, and just overall, we can't rely and wait for a local government, a state, or the federal government to come and swoop, sweep us off our feet and save the day. So there's no knight in shining armor that is going to have more power than our own empowerment. And so that's the goal with today's video is to empower and encourage each of you to think outside the box. Um, I have some video links that I'm gonna include in the live chat, which by the way, the live chat's on, the super chat's on, that does directly support our channel. So if you guys wanna you know, do a super chat, I appreciate that. Um, we've had a lot of folks um, do that every day and I'm, I'm grateful because it does finance our time here. Um, so there are some good resources I'm going to provide for you. Some hospitals have come together and put together a DIY how to make your own face mask. I have some additional ideas on that and I just wanna dig right on into that. So um, first of all, I'm gonna poll everybody. So my question to you is how many of you, and I don't know if I can do a poll. Um, I can't, I wish uh, YouTube could let me do a poll. Okay, so how many of you, are actively wearing masks, gloves, or some sort of protective eyewear when and if you are going out and about. So let me know, comment down below, let me know what you are doing. If you are taking any steps or, or measure tools, um, you know, measures to actually protect your, your eyewear or your nose or your mouth. So comment down below, let me know. I'm gonna take this morning is brought to you by coconut water. I'm drinking coconut water this morning. I was, uh, Brian started, um, he started at like 10.30, I thought maybe 10 o'clock, 10.15, he started uh, the uh, uh, Fred Rogers and Mr. Rogers movie. And then he went to bed like 20 minutes later and I got hooked on it. And then I just, I was so emotional. It was such a great movie. Okay, so Yanni, yes, uh, she is protecting herself. Uh, trains, which are usually standing, have two to four people per car. Dale, make my own mask and safety, wearing safety glasses. Um, high gaming spot. Anita, I wore glasses and gloves. Instagram, let me know, are you guys protecting yourselves? Okay, because so I'm seeing comments coming through. We got George on. Okay. Um, paper does carry the virus about 24 hours or so. Um, all right. So Kim H. Montgomery said, I did not, when I went out on Wednesday, it didn't occur to me to do that until you spoke about it yesterday. Okay, good, good. So that's empowering. Um, okay. Pat, I want to see that movie. It's a really good movie. Diet P diet DPL. Absolutely. Yay. And we've got members. Thank you for all of our members joining us. Uh, Lois sunglasses, no masks available here. Sanitizer in person car. Um, Shelly Ace, yes, every time I have to go out to the store, you have an N95 mask, excellent, and gloves where no one else is. So surprised, I know it is surprising. It's also part of our messaging. People haven't taken this seriously. We're about three to four weeks way behind the curve. You know, what the difference between the US and like South Korea, we both had the same case, you know, the first case the same day. The difference in South Korea, they're taking everybody's temperatures before they're entering work and they're going about their day. They have all the materials and supplies and um, it, that's a big difference. They're, they're sanitizing everything. They are definitely taking it way more seriously than we have. Okay, so Terry Robinson, no mask available. I am going to give you guys some resources. Um, and so Sweet Whip, 
says I have it on Instagram. I have a kit that I've been carrying in my car. It has wet wipes, box of gloves, uh, sanitizer, colloidal silver. Excellent. And that actually is one of the videos that we're going to do. If it stays nice out today, I'm roping Brian in. He's going to be my video dude later on today. Um, okay. So let's, um, let's, let's dig into this. Okay. So here, here's my list of the, the personal protective equipment that we all may have at home. First, we want to protect our eyes. So glasses or goggles. These actually came from Brian's workbench. Gabriel actually wears these anytime they're mowing the yard. Like Gabriel has a fake mower. Brian has a real one. And Gabriel, we, we put these little goggles on and see it protects on the side. We put these on Gabriel. We put the little head thing, the ear thing, and he's out there with this like little lawnmower. But these are protective eyewear goggles. And these are really, you know, they're not a full seal, but they're better than nothing because the direct droplets. And what you have to think about is respiratory droplets, friends, can spray from cough. It's in the air. We don't always see it, but these shields protect our eyes from getting that into our body. Okay. So that that's really key. So eyewear. Um, I can't find my glasses for some, I think they're in my car. I didn't run out and get them, but these are Brian's glasses. Okay. So these you could wear as well. It doesn't give the wraparound, but there are ways to also protect if you really need to. But in our everyday situation, I think this would be perfect. Okay. Um, the other thing is our nose and our mouth. So I actually grabbed from the workbench um, and it's a little, a little dirty, but this, this is kind of a respirator mask. I have had this for over a year because I was painting Gabriel's toy room. I got these at Home Depot and these were to protect me from the paint fumes, even though it was low VOC and I had three air filters going, I still am really cognizant. And I was using like the metallic um, magnetizing paint, which was crazy. So this would be something that would be protective. So it protects over the nose and it protects over the, actually, I think I've got this one backwards, I do. Hold on. I don't usually have to wear a mask every day in my line of work. I have before when I was pregnant, I was very cognizant. But so the nose, this part goes over, you can smoosh it. So it gives a little bit of a seal, but it covers and it gives you protection over your nose and your mouth. Okay. So then if you have your glasses, this could very well be your approach when you're going out and about. So you at least have some degree of protection over your eyes in your mouth. And so this is going to get all fogged up. That's the one thing to be really cognizant of. Um, but that, this is a very good resource. Now, many of you won't have access to these because these um, are very limited online. These glasses are still online. I'm going to get you a link um, for Amazon, but you can still order these as far as I know. Here's what's, what is very exciting uh, for us. So the other thing, the CDC is recommended and what I recommended the other day, which is you can wear a ma your like scarf. So this is one of my thicker scarves. This is an Aldi scarf, $4.99 fine. You could very easily pin, so you can make your own mask, you cover your mouth and cover your mouth. Now, this is material. And so you, you are still going to see or you're, you'll still be exposed to droplets, but the thickness of this is a lot better than like that thin scarf I had on St. Patrick's Day when I recommended, but you could do a few pins here and this you could have down and then you just pull up, you know, this is an infinity scarf, so I could really wrap it up and, and make it easier, but I would definitely secure it in place and then go about with, let's say your sunglasses. I mean, most of us have sunglasses, most of us have some sort of scarf. And so this, can equip you much better than being without, okay? It's not the best. I'm going to tell you it's not the best. Now, this morning, I started thinking, okay, well, here's the challenge. Even some of the um, higher level masks, they, they might protect what's going out, but they don't always protect what's going in or vice versa. So I started thinking, you know, as a crafter, I'm not totally crafty, but I have a lot of craft supplies. One of the things that I have done in the past is I've used Mod Podge. You know, it's a crafting glue that dries on clear. That could very well be a protective barrier that you could put over it. And I don't know for sure. I'd have to check it out and see if it 
if, if that holds up to cleaning with any type of our good cleaning products like Force and Nature. And I've got a link, product link down below. There's 50% off coupon code for this with that link um, for a starter kit. But the Force of Nature, you could spray on, you could leave it on for a period of time and then wipe it off and it kills the bacteria. Same with like Clorox wipes or any of those. So that could be something that you could do. Okay, so that's your mask potential. Same thing here. So everybody has the ability to do some sort of mask or scarf as well. Um, but here's where we can take it a step further. And I, I want to grab, I meant to post it in the description. I'm going to grab, I sent myself some um, email links last night. Let me go to my email. So Instagram, if you want this link, I'm going to give you the link. Where is it? I sent myself a link. Um, I'm going to give you the link for uh, Deaconess Hospital up in New England. They posted, they have a free PDF, so I'm, I'm linking it now. They posted this, how to make a face mask. And it's actually, it follows the CDC requirements for protective wear. Um, and it's a free download. And basically it says you'll need cotton fabric, uh, they said pretty print, print is best, whatever you want to do. You have a cotton flannel for the backing. So that's this kind of material. You can grab this online from Michael's or um, any of your craft stores. And then rope elastic, that would be the cording to keep it, the mask in place behind your ear. And they give you a certain amount of inches uh, for, um, you know, tying it. And, and nodding it, but also they have, you can make two sizes. They have an adult and a children's sizing. And then they have basically eight steps of how to do this. You can sew it together. And it's it's all on this. So see, they've got the steps, they've got the um, kind of description, like how you'd want to be sewing it. It's a rectangular type of effect. Now I started to, to dig around and think, okay, so let's say we all get caught in fabric, but it's it's not as protective, right? Well, I started reading online about some of the water wicking materials, and that might very well be a protective material. So I actually have, this is from some ski trips uh, a few years ago. I, this is like one of these like champions, uh, like sports, it's built in sports raw material. This is water wicking. And I think it's antibacterial as well, but I could take this already. I have this in my arsenal of items at home and I could cut several shapes out of this. And so this, and it could very well work out to be a mask that I could use in a public setting. Um, I do know that um, they are asking for folks that might have hobbies of sewing to help make masks and they will be distributing them. So any of you who are into hobbies, you could very much be a part of this group that supplies masks for our healthcare workers to keep them healthy and safe because they're working for us. So that is a link down um, in the chat box I just posted where you can grab this for free. This is a great way to make your own mask. It's a, it, it's super easy. Um, I don't have a sewing kit, but I would be inspired to buy one and to start pumping these out because um, you know, this we're in a, we're in a bad state in terms of not having the protective equipment, and um, just with the degree of minimal um, supplies and resources, we want to protect not just ourselves but our, also our healthcare workers. So, just FYI, we have an Amazon delivery. Dogs might freak out. Hold on, Brian, can you put the pups outside? I think the Amazon guy's coming. Okay. All right, so they might freak out. Um, and Gabriel's doing school. Okay, so so that's where we were with a mask. So um, you know, it does help. It does help if you have materials that can be bleached. So these could be cleaned after every uh, outing, after every engagement. You know, if I were in a clinical setting seeing patients, which we have halted all in person, I totally would be wearing these. And then I have a dye side wipe. It's a super industrial hospital grade wipe. It kills C. diff, AIDS, like all these things, coronavirus, in a matter of sometimes 30 seconds up to a minute. And I would wipe these thoroughly after every individual, just like I do with all of our supplies. 
um, and materials people are on. So Angela Ramsey Robinson said, what about antimicrobial material like cleaning cloths? Um, possibly. I'm not familiar with the Norwex, but I definitely think, you know, antimicrobial is one of these things that could be antibacterial. Check to see. But honestly, something is better than nothing. I mean, even, even folks, you know, I, I saw somebody who made a little mask herself last week when I was at Aldi. And she just had it like this. And it was like a little bandana. But, you know, we, we have to we have to start protecting ourselves because we know at minimum three hours, this the particles, the respiratory droplets are active and they are alive and they are floating in the air. So the virus is active in those. Let's say you have an Amazon delivery or I had a question last night. I uh, somebody said I live in an apartment building, so I'm keeping my apartment clean. But what do I do with the hallways? People are passing through, you're getting deliveries, whatnot. Well, that's a really good question. And that's a very viable situation for a lot of people, even in condo buildings. So, you know, my recommendation was, okay, you could put out a UV air filter just to kind of sanitize your little space. You could also um, do, uh, you could you could wear masks and, and protective gear anytime you're in your hallway. Um, and just really limit that exposure, diffuse some oils. Not that, you know, the UV air filtration, UV does kill uh, the virus, that we know. But, you know, the oils, I'm not making any claims that the oils, you know, kill the virus, but there are good properties to the oils that are healthy for us. Um, and so I wanna put that out there. Okay, so let's see here. Um, we have, um, we have some other options too, in terms of gloves. So this was really big, um, you know, and I really feel like all delivery personnel, all mail carriers, all any people working in the public setting should be wearing gloves. And these are easy to clean off, uh, but these are my gardening gloves. I have since sanitized them after our last delivery, but I have these in my little door pack and they are protected with a little, um, kind of coating. So this is the mesh. It's got the coating here. Um, and this is what I use. I have these in the car. So you definitely want to start to think about equipping yourself um, together. So Anita says at Sam's Club Distribution Center in Sanger, Texas. Oh boy, she's there at the distribution center and no one has protection. I'm the only one. Yeah. So there you go. And here's the thing. Yesterday I posted, you know, I'm shopping on Amazon and I'm buying all these items. Um, the wipes, Paula, oh, uh, you know, I'm seeing some, some, uh, messages. So the wipes I actually buy through my, um, my medical supply company. Um, and I actually called them, they are completely wiped out until like April. So, um, but one of the things that you have to be cog cognizant of is multiple people touch things. And so, you know, they're going to put things on pallets. They're going to grab things and transfer. Other people might touch it. Then you're grabbing it and then you're putting it at home. You're putting it in your car. You got to wipe your car down, you know, like all of these touch points where there could be exposure. And I know that seems like you're being ridiculous. Like, oh my gosh, I might no way an OCD type of person. I could only see this really, really causing somebody that has um, the little germaphobe, not little, the germophobia kind of OCD. Um, and that's not a negative, but I could see this really, really like causing greater stress. So, you know, what we can do to minimize our stress and control is are, are things that we can control. We can control our protection, gloves and eyewear and, you know, donning your own mask like this or grabbing one of these masks and coating it to protect it and wearing it when you're out and about. But if you are not wearing these protective items and you're out and about, um, you need to be. And it's not just for you protecting other people like you. It's protecting you from other people who aren't washing their hands properly, who don't think this is serious. I mean, we see so many trollers here on my YouTube feed that think this is some media outrage. And, and it isn't. This is a, a valid uh, virus. I mean, it is it's substantiated by folks on uh, respirators. And we're seeing the epidemiology of this. 
that it it could pose a very serious threat and it's already threatened our livelihood. Um, you know, today, Brian and I were supposed to be getting married. I was supposed to be having hair and makeup happening at a hotel room with like a mimosa brunch for my girls and we would be having our celebration tonight. We had to derail that a week ago. Many of you have been in quarantine or in self-imposed isolation for about a week. And so this is very disruptive. And this type of disruption is not made up. It's not for some stupid, unfounded um, thing that's out there. This is this is true. This is legit. So, and the, the whole country, we have Praveena. Praveena, tell me where you guys are, where you're coming in from. But we, as a country, should all be taking, uh, oh, she's in India. Um, we, we should be taking measures. So India has a total of 213 cases. And from Sunday, we are doing self-isolation without any pressure from government. We want to get rid of this virus. And I think that's, that is, a, should be a normal response. But unfortunately, there, there are countries that are not seeing that response from uh, the public and the community. And that really does, does um, make it very important that we, we get in control. Um, DS, can you get in your eyes? They are not protected. Yes, you can. So that's why I recommend, I, I recommend these. These are really, I should have cleaned them. They're really dirty. Um, but these, these are things like this is from, you know, your hardware store. This is what you'd see like in construction. Like if you were to be sawing or whatever, doing yard work, this protects you from, you know, particles getting in your eye, but also the droplets. So I'd rather have a droplet on here. The trick is you want to clean these before you take your, your gloves off. So you want to clean the outside and then a separate material, clean the inside of these. And, and that is so, yes, the eyes, uh, the eyes are really, really key. Yes. So I would have, we would have been getting married today. So I'm still getting calls, still working with vendors. It looks like our new day is in April uh, 9th. So I think that's firmed up. We just have to sign all new contracts. Luckily, the state of emergency declaration last week allowed us to, um, you know, there's a special clause, like an act of God, <laughs> like crazy disasters that allowed us to keep all of our um, deposits. <clears throat> so basically we paid for the wedding and uh, now we decided to extend the time. We're going to party more. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when it does come around, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> but they're projecting this to be around for at least a good year, year and a half. So hopefully we don't have to deal with this. Um, but and we're going to ramp up our wedding insurance so that if we do have to cancel again, that'll be it. We're going to go to Santorini like my friend and be, call it a day. Um, OK, so uh, Rowan, yesterday, the California government, yeah, I declared a lockdown. Um, all right. So. The big thing is just being cognizant and protecting yourself. Also protecting your home. Watch, um, I'm gonna encourage you all to watch yesterday's, last night's video that I put out. It took me eight tries. Something was going on with YouTube. They demonetized it even before I started editing it. It's been a really popular video. I've got that on appeal, but that that is really posing a challenge for uh, us creators. I saw a fellow doctor comment that he's actually gotten a lot of his videos just completely taken down. Um, and so that's why if you guys do hit our affiliate links, that does support me directly. Um, it's just a small commission. You don't pay for it, but the vendors do. And so I appreciate that. Um, but it's, it's really crazy. So the big thing and that I want to impart today is um, if you are out of cleaning supplies or can't find them, uh, Force of Nature is a really good resource. This um, is a combination of water, salt, and vinegar in an electrolyzer, and the electrolyzer actually changes the chemical composition, and it is an, it's one of the only e, um, EPA-approved uh, solutions for killing coronavirus. So that I've got a link down below. They have a 50% off their starter kit. Um, and their, their starter kit's great. Like that'll last you a while. And then you just get, you can even have reordered the little, um, packets of the solution and super easy, but it's a worthy investment if you guys haven't done that. Um, the other thing that, um, I want to comment is I know I've gotten a lot of questions for you saying, should we do takeout? Should we go to the stores? So here's, here's some things to note right now. The stores have gotten, not all of them, but a lot of them have gotten restocked. 
So in the event that you ran out of toilet paper or uh, that was the big one, toilet paper, paper towels, cleaning stuff, um, don't visit, please don't visit your stores, but do go online like Instacart. I have my Instacart link down there. You get $10 if you click on that link. So you get a free 10 bucks. So buy some toilet paper on me <laughs> or paper towels. Um, but I checked, I've, I've been kind of checking the stores and it'll tell you, it links you with your local store that would be shopped and um, you can see the inventory levels. And so Publix close to us has toilet paper, they have paper towels, they have, I checked, they have all the Lysol products, they've got all the seventh generation. Um, they only have two types of bleach, they have some scented bleach, but they also had a lot of the food items that I think they got rocked on. So just know that even though the mass exodus was last weekend to all the stores, the stores have gotten supplies, Again, because people are staying off the roads or should be, the truckers are driving longer hours. They're delivering products. So you should be able to get items. Same with Aldi. Aldi stocks um, on Wednesdays. And because of the trucking thing, Tuesday, I put an order in. Tuesday, we got all sorts of uh, fruit and, and mostly fruit, some a few veggies. Um, so Kim Montgomery has a good question. Is hydrogen peroxide a good bleach alternative for this virus? It can be, it depends on the percentage, but ethanol, um, so alcohol, like 65, 70%, um, bleach is definitely a factor. There are some homemade cleaners. This is where I go to. This is my go-to. I don't have to worry about measuring out things. I don't have to worry about harmful chemicals being open in our household with a you know, four and a half year old who's getting into everything, who's at home now. Um, and I did have somebody ask about the products at the door. He doesn't really go near the door, but if he did, I'd have it outside. Um, and I always wipe down my shoes. So the one thing that I didn't comment and show in the video is I wipe my shoes down now because we can carry that. I, we also, if on walks, uh, we wipe the dog's paws down. We only have one that we're kind of walking around the neighborhood. The other two are a little unruly, um, especially around people. So let's see, Pat, she's down to two rolls of toilet paper. Thankfully, a good friend's brother and wife had some and are willing to share. That's very nice. And definitely, you know, don't don't go into the stores, but do shop online, um, delivery, Target, you know, online, Amazon. We'll probably see them getting restocked in the next probably two weeks or so. But just stay on top of that and think about the off hours um, of when, um, you know, people aren't necessarily shopping. So I always think about that anyway. Also, if you do have to, for whatever reason, go in the morning, go in the late evening, um, and always protect yourself. So goggles, your mask, if you're going to get one of these, Mod Podge it, protect it on the outside, or do your own with, you know, some good antimicrobial material, have your mask, and be active, engaged, and ready to protect yourself and then clean those materials, you know, with our masks, if it's cloth material, you can have, you know, add bleach or just, you don't even have to have bleach. It's just hot water, hot water and regular, you know, detergent that you're using will kill the virus. And then always, always wash your hands. Um, so that's a good question. And you just said, what about tea tree? One of the things that I actually do like to recommend, and I'm seeing if I have it here. I think I took it upstairs. Um, one of the things with masks, and I, I've done this in my clinic, um, I will always diffuse. I'll put a little diffusing, um, like little pads, or I might do a little dual diffuser dropper. If we're going to be reusing these, it's probably best to just pin a, a diffuser pad. You can buy those on Amazon um, to the material so that you don't, you don't, the oil could potentially damage the material or even the protective aspect of it. But literally you could put oil, you could diffuse inside your mask. And I always think that's very helpful. It also is beneficial for enhancing some of the good antimicrobial properties into your sinuses, helping you breathe better. Um, I also have a vendor. I'll post a link on YouTube. Um, let me see. Let me make a note for myself because sometimes I forget. I'm going to post a link. I have a vendor that I love that um, anytime I travel, they have, um, it's Aramade. They have a little insert, uh, it's a nose clip. Um, and I think he has a coupon code, I'll find that. Um, but he, they have a defense blend, they have a relaxation blend, that's super, super helpful. Um, all right, so everybody's waiting for Force of Nature, it's so good. They have not, um, 
you know, they have a good quantity of stock. So unlike some of the shelves, things aren't, aren't that, you know, you'll be able to get your supply. Um, let's see, looking for a mask and gel, hand gel, no more. Um, yeah, and there are some toilet paper alternatives, but there's still toilet paper. I've checked, there's some on Amazon. Um, and, and the other thing too is some of it is staging. So you might not, you might get in the queue. Um, I don't always think that's a bad idea, knowing that we're probably anticipating this is the first wave, there might be another wave. We are ordering a freezer chest um, and I'm going to just load it up with fruits and veggies that we can reuse and just items um, so that we're not in a bind um, just for our family. So, um, all right, let me know if you guys have any other questions. Michelle, thanks for taking time to put the information to impart to us, very informative. I know this is serious times and things as we know it will never be the same. Yes. Hi, F Green. Welcome. Uh, yeah, we are in definitely an interesting time. I was reading online that uh, Shipt and Instacart and some of the other online shopping uh, resources, that that will change permanently the way people grocery shop. Like they were already making projections that like I... I don't use it. Like this is the first time I've done it. Like that whole thing about getting one potato. I, thought, I have this recipe of my like my go-to comfort food, something called goulash. It's this German dish. It's been modified, and each person in our family just keeps modifying it. And so, like my go-to are either Yukon Gold, organic Yukon Gold, or like red potatoes with the skin on them. And um, and I I thought I ordered a bag, but you know, cause it says seven 99 a pound. I'm like, Oh, I'm getting a pound. Now I got one potato. And so, you know, it's a, it's a learning curve for us who are a little bit older that are not like so technologically savvy or on top of like technology for convenience. But the reality is technology can help keep us safe and well. And, um, I think switching to that, that's one of the projections was that this might actually allow grocery stores to streamline. They might just have distribution centers and then everything goes out from the center. So it limits the amount of people inside, you know, down the road, if there were another pandemic that hits our country or our, not our country, just our world in general, like if that's a different model of delivery, we might actually be able to have better access and it would be safer access. So it's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, Alan, oh yeah, goulash. You guys know what goulash is? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it is my go-to. Uh, usually I do buffalo, uh, ground buffalo or grass-fed. I'm going to be using one. Brian doesn't like it. Like, I use mushrooms. Like, I throw in tons of mushrooms and, like, onions. I use shallots. That's, like, my little version. I do shallots, a dairy alternative, bone broth. Like, it's so, so good. Um, and you can do a lot. Like, you can slip in veggies and... Um, I might do some carrots and peas in this one just to give us even more uh, more uh, veggies. So, oh, uh, Deborah, ciao, ciao. I don't know if I'm saying that. Ciao from Italy. Uh, prayers to all of you guys in Italy. Crazy, crazy time there. Uh, Michelle, can you tell us what markers are used to tell us who is positive for COVID-19 versus the flu? In terms of the test, I mean, the, at the end of the day, it's testing. Um, the temperature is a big factor, but we're also seeing the gastrointestinal components be involved. Um, it has quite an intense onset, like it's like kind of slow and then boom, it usually will hit people. But again, everybody's immune system is so different that there's so many variables, but testing is, is, um, is the factor. But that 101 temperature is really key. Some people are going up to 103, 103.4. Um, that's big. Oh, Lorianne, first time doing online grocery pickup. Yay. Uh, so yeah, the online's really great. Um, and then, you know, earlier in the week I said, uh, one of the things about, um, you know, just thinking about like, what, what would you need? Here's the other thing. What would you need in the event that you did have COVID-19? And if you're in New York city and there's, you know, 5,700 cases, um, and you know, that's just this first, like, that's still testing coming in from like the weekend. So, you know, there's definitely a potential that you might have exposure. What do you do to offset those symptoms? So do you catch some of the other videos? I actually go into that in greater detail. Um, but you know, I'm really cognizant of all of your time. I am grateful that we have this format that we can come live for community. We're all in this together. This is highly 
uh, stress inducing. So making sure that we're you know, coming up on the weekend, it's springtime, make sure you get out, you take care of yourself. Um, this weekend, Brian already started to help me out with this, um, but we're going to start gardening. And if you guys have the capacity, you, know, you can get seeds online. I actually have this one awesome vendor. Um, they were down in Florida. I would get all these heirloom, like organic seeds and like different varieties of like purple um, cauliflower and all different types of tomatoes and uh, beans and just all sorts of vegetables um, and herbs. So consider taking that action um, because maybe down the road you might need some ginger and you might need garlic and onions instead of having to go to the store. It's in your backyard and you're growing your own uh, veggies. So I'm gonna encourage everybody to consider that as an activity. Um, so let's see, Pat, oh, what did I say about the freezer chest? Um, we're buying one. So we are investing in a freezer chest. I've wanted one for a little while. This is my opportunity, because Ryan's like, oh, that's a good idea. Um, so we're gonna get one, and I'm going to put um, fruit and vegetables in it. Um, all right, so Jan Jana, Instacart and several other food delivery services do not ugh, deliver to my house. Any other rural people finding this the case? Walmart pickup has no open slots for foreseeable future. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, shoot. So here's what I would recommend. Um, and this is where this whole freezer thing is coming in. Um, I would contact some of your local farmers. Now this is the whole shopping local. Our local farmers could be our go-to resource for eggs for goat milk, for dairy milk, if you're consuming it, um, for portions of cows and pigs. I mean, it sounds crazy, but like they sell that. I know farmers markets will probably be postponed, but you, I would, I would first check your local, cho do the first thing I would do, go to um, co-ops. So look for co-ops and check out your local farmers because co-ops might be able to bring in supplies, the other thing, um, you know, if you own a business, and it's not too hard to do nowadays, and especially now a lot of people are putting their thinking hats on and getting innovative with how are they going to make revenue. You could set up an Etsy shop, a business name, really quick, easy. But then you might be able to buy from some of the um, companies that supply businesses. And so like my one vendor where I always get my gloves and my um I don't always buy masks, but I have gotten masks from them before. And all my cleaning supplies for our, you know, I had a big wellness center, so our spa, we'd get all of the those supplies. They, that's that's who I go through. So a lot of the materials that I get, I know people had the microband question. I know they sell that at, Tar at Publix, but a lot of that I go through my business side of the house. Um, but it might allow you to get things shipped in. Um, unfortunately I've seen some of the vendors that I work with that would be, um, warehousing and shipping things out kind of like an Amazon, but on the natural side, they are so overloaded. They're actually telling us not to promote them. It's crazy. So, um, yeah, we just kind of have to think outside the box, but definitely. And the other thing too, is we might be looking at a barter system. So Pat had mentioned she's down to two rolls of toilet paper. Her neighbors helped her out. Um, we had somebody who was on the other day who was uh, very hard on herself because she bought like 10 things of ketchup. Well, somebody might need ketchup and guess what? You might need something. So you can swap out, you can trade. So this might be where some of these items become a commodity in and of themselves and you can trade that. These are stories that I heard from my grandma during the Great Depression. And, um, you know, we might be looking at that, but first definitely take care of yourself, wear protective materials, get savvy, you know, garden gloves are not, there hasn't been a run on garden gloves yet, but get stock, stock up, have those available for your garden, but also for your cleaning. Um, I will tell you in my little searching at our local Publix, our grocery store, they had, you know, all of the dishwashing uh, gloves. Those qualify. So just kind of think outside the box. We just have to be a little innovative um, and, um, and, and and do please, please stay at home when you can. We have uh, Zoomery, Bonjour, I live in Paris, uh, Android, all people stay at home. Yes. Uh, from Canada, Lorianne, and I had to book my Walmart pickup slot four days ahead. Holy cow. Um, 
Gina, I work as a shopper for a large retail grocery chain. You can specify in our online service to clarify how many you need, i.e. potatoes. One pound, just not one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, what I love with Instacart is I realize you can chat with them. Um, and so I'm like really grateful. We tip, we give them a very nice tip because they're doing good service for us with, you know, Brian's autoimmunity. He has no spleen. And if he gets any type of bug, his, his body attacks his platelet level. So this is, you know, a situation where we are being very cognizant. Um, sorry, Instagram, just going to make sure we're okay. Um, we're being cognizant of that. So I am, you know, not going out and about and we are all of our exposure. Um, so that's helpful, Gina, for all of us who are trying to figure out how to use the system. Like I'm the idiot who, who bought one potato for a recipe. Um, and Suzanne, she has plenty of deer meat. I see food shortages in the future. I got groceries like if a hurricane was coming, same here. Um, so I don't have to go out of town. Uh, got cash, gas, and food. That's a good idea. Gas. That's a really good idea. Um, so those are just things we just have to kind of contemplate. You know, if we are hunkering down, you won't be driving a lot. But, you know, in the event of an emergency, it's always a good idea. I just be careful with that storage of it. Um, also, Gina says, if you can please use this resource of shopping as it limits the number of people in the stores and makes it safer for everyone. That is such a great point. So again, this is, you know, we know, I didn't post this, but there are pediatric cases in the US of coronavirus. So despite the whole kind of early, you know, we're moving with the data. Um, it's not just elderly, it's everybody. In fact, 20 to 44 are the most hit. Um, 25, 29% of the cases, oh, here comes our UPS guy. 29% um, of our cases, are folks in that category. And so we have to be very um, smart about exposure. And it's it's just negligent. Like I just, I'm using that word. People are being negligent. You're being negligent if you're going out and about and you don't have to. Now there are circumstances where you need baby food and you need diapers. And, and that's where if you can start to be, you know, get some order at home, assess your pantry, assess your levels of everyday use items and figure out, okay, what do I need? What don't I wanna run out of? What would cause me to leave my home or need to go on a run? This includes prescription medication. You know, if you can call your doctor now, there are, you know, pharmacies that they mail um, items. So this is really, it, it's just a different way of processing this. But if you just, you know, I've always kind of, my whole thing is stay ahead of the curve because the curve here in the US is lagging. Let's stay ahead of the curve. And I'm gonna help you, each of you stay ahead of that curve as much as I can. I'm just gonna tell you what I'm doing to try and stay ahead of the curve. I mean, it's crazy. The wedding thing totally helped us in staying ahead of the curve. Like I, we were gonna be out of town this week and I, you know, our kitchen also is helping that situation. You know, we kind of decimated our supplies in our pantry and our freezer, which allowed me to, to, to restock. Um, so United Health said free tell a doctor for 30 days. Thanks, Suzanne. Yeah. So, you know, you don't have to necessarily go to your doctor's offices. I know people need labs, blood draws, certain procedures, but we're also seeing elective procedures getting completely wiped off the schedule because bed space is needed. Um, and Pat's right. We can do this, everyone, and we will get through this. We'll get through it together. Um, so that's really, really big. Elderberry, I do like. I have other videos on some of the herbals. So I, I definitely hit my playlist. I have a live show playlist. I also have a Corona playlist. Um, and just check out all my videos. I have some more videos coming out today and through the weekend. Today's video is going to be a technique that you can do on yourself that will boost your energy, enhance uh, some happy hormones and calm your body literally it's quite powerful so stay tuned for that i've i've got that and almost all ready to go so i'll probably release it at noon instagram's going to be going away so instagram thanks for joining us and for youtube please like and share that totally helps our content here because we are getting demonetized uh with this content <laughs> and i don't know how long it's going to stay up but i'm going to continue to educate each of you just being a little savvy with my wording i'm uh, you now using virus and other Kind of phrases to work around getting demonetized as this will be my primary source of income um, coming to you all and putting out content and working with um, companies that can support 
all of us in our health and wellness program. So um, I'm grateful for your time. Elderberry is very beneficial. Um, so it is, it is recommended not always for uh, folks with autoimmunity, but just be aware of that. It's not a, an immune modulator. Um, but yeah, so that's my update for all of you today. I'm going to wrap up by Instagram. I'll see you on tomorrow's, tomorrow's video. I'll let them go in now. Um, so I'm saving my Instagram video. All right. So that's going to my story. So if you guys want the replay, this will be on the replay for all of you joining after just comment on the regular video. That actually is an engagement point. It does help uh, the algorithm. YouTube will push it out. So for all of you watching and commenting in the feed, once this wraps up, if you could go to the real video and comment in it, um, it doesn't matter how many words you just comment, like it, share it. That is hugely, hugely beneficial. So today I am uh, doing less work. I'm just going to chillax. I can't, it's just very disappointing. Uh, you know, the way a week changes things today would have been a really exciting day for our family as um, we've postponed our wedding for today. Uh, but it is uh, much better coming to all of of you and encouraging you because that totally feeds my spirit. And so I am grateful for all of you helping me therapeutically dive into work <laughs> in a healthy way uh, to support our community. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to continue to do that because I really feel like so many of you appreciate this. So just be, you know, be really smart friends, stay out of the public scene. Um, and I will probably be doing a video this weekend that'll kind of talk about resources and things that you can do at home that will be entertaining, that keeps you busy, that's busy that um, you can consider. So uh, Monica, lots of hearts and prayers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and I'm so grateful for each of you. Um, and I'll include the eyewear link. So I'm gonna wrap up this video, I'll include a whole bunch of stuff. And um, I really appreciate all your support. So thank you everybody, happy Friday. We're going to get through this. We're always together. And I am so grateful for all of my members. By the way, if you guys want to continue to support my channel, you can become a member. Um, I don't know what she's barking at. Um, you can become a member of my YouTube channel. I think it's $4.99, $4.99 a month. So you can hit the join button. Um, I'm going to be posting a private um, Q&A session with my, our members. We're working out a specific time. It might be this weekend. Um, so if you aren't a member, do you consider that does support our channel and that really does help um, help me take time to bring this to you. So thanks everybody. Have a wonderful Friday. And um, yes, life is good. We are healthy. All is well. And stay tuned for today's, today's video. I'm very excited because this is something. It is my gift to all of you. So I hope you guys have a great day. I will see you tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Tune in. Let's have coffee or tea together. Have a good day. Be well, buddy.